Hello there. Happy May the 4th and may the 4th be with you. What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be talking about some new directions that I think Atomic Mass Games might be taking with X-Wing uh, dual faction ships. Uh, I want to talk about that a little bit today as well as a couple of other channel based things. Also uh, let you know there's still time left to enter that $25 Amazon gift card giveaway just by being a subscriber and leaving a comment on this or one of my videos. Also be sure to check out Luxury Playstyle. They're doing a a May the 4th celebration. So you see I'm moving over here because this is a big old code, right? Use code Krabok Force, and you're going to save not 15 like normal, but 20% off of your X-Wing tokens. And that's only valid for May the 4th and May the 5th. So use Krabok Force as your code. Be sure to check out Luxury Playstyle. Dot com amazing tokens you've heard me talk about them before this is a chance to get more savings than you've ever gotten before so check them out use code crabock force if you're watching this in the future you can always use code crabock vip which does save you 15 percent uh so always use that code make sure you're going to get your savings and uh, that also helps support the channel a little bit but give them some love they got amazing tokens you're going to love them all right so the Bad Batch also comes out today, so uh, no spoilers in the chat, but uh, we are going to talk about The Bad Batch, uh, because for those of you who are big fans of The Clone Wars, this is effectively, uh, for a lot of people, it's going to feel a lot like a whole new season of The Clone Wars. But the cool thing about The Bad Batch is that it's kind of going into uh, the the birth of the Empire and kind of past Empire Day, which I thought is an appropriate topic for dual faction ships, because... Um, at the time I'm recording this, I have not seen The Bad Batch yet, so I'm not going to talk about anything from the episode, but it does give me the idea of, uh, you know, a lot of ships that are going to be, you know, Clone Wars era ships, but still in service to the Empire. Of course, we've seen a lot of that. If you've read books, if you've read uh, a lot of the, even the new canon books, there's a lot of post-Order 66 Clone Wars era technology. You know, the Imperial still use... Archigens. We've seen that in Star Wars Rebels. The Imperials still use Venators, uh, but even as far as X-Wing is concerned, the Empire still uses like V-Wings and uh, Eta 2s and, and things like that. And so uh, I think the Bad Batch gives us a plenty of opportunity to have a lot of Clone Wars era stuff still in X-Wing. Um, and we, we can already kind of see that sort of thing happening uh in uh in, in what they've already given us with the trident class assault ship uh and 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 huge ships in general are already dual factions so i feel like this doesn't necessarily have to be something all new that atomic mass games has kind of reinvents the wheel i feel like this could be a direction that they're already thinking of going um because of huge ships now granted that's epic play that's huge ship play that's not necessarily all the regular ships right but there is kind of that that precedent set of sh you know ships that are sold that are available for multiple factions and i think that's a cool thing and i hopefully that's something that they continue to do um and i think their other precedent is set and now that luke eddie who is the legion lead developer is also you know they head honcho for star wars specific products where he's kind of taking over uh you know all of the all of the programs a little bit um, I don't know how much actual, you know, design and development he's doing or if he's taking more of a kind of a emperor's kind of throne room approach, you know. But if, if Legion is any indication, you know, dual faction packs are now starting to come for Star Wars Legion with the Wookiees now being a Rebel and Republic uh, pack. And I think there is... And we also had that for, for, for C-3PO and R2-D2 with Star Wars Legion. So the precedent has already been set in Legion. And since there are sometimes a lot of interlocking and borrowing of ideas between the games, now with one cohesive dude who's already worked on this at the top of the umbrella for, for all of the Star Wars products, that being also X-Wing and Armada, uh, I think that seems to be something that we might see happen. And I think the Bad Batch and May the 4th uh, is just a good opportunity to talk about all of this and and how it may work because uh you know we're gonna see the havoc uh the havoc class uh, you know in in this this was their ship from clone Wars season seven um and this is just one example of a ship that i could easily see being multiple factions obviously this was in service during the time of the republic it's going to make a a, a fantastic republic ship but could this also be a dual faction ship if if the bad batch does 
you know, uh, spend some time in service to the Empire? Would this potentially be an Imperial ship? Would this potentially become a Rebel ship, depending on how this season and this series goes? Maybe, you know, members of the Bad Batch do go on to eventually form the Rebellion. Who knows? You know, like, there's... But the, but what the fact is, this show is kind of at the perfect timeline to have lots of different fighters that cross eras and we're going to witness the crossing of the eras and uh and and i think it's just a, a perfect timeline and a perfect show to give us multi-faction ships and so i think that's a really exciting thing and there's there's certainly been a lot of ships you know we talked about the edda too vader has uh you know before he got his tie um his tie defender uh, or rather not his tie before, before well long before he got his tie defender he was in the tie advanced x1 but before he got his tie advanced x1 uh advanced x1 he was in an edit 2 uh and it was a black edit 2 and and he you know he flew this in a lot of the books and it was pretty good in it um you know v wings also i we talked about those um you know, there, Lords of the Sith was one of those books that uh, dealt a lot with, you know, early days of the Empire. You know, there, we, we, we forget sometimes, or at least some people do, maybe not you. You know, and I'm talking to you. I know you know. I know you know. And I know, I know that person over there, they know. I know they know. And oh, and you too. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm, yeah, you. Mm -hmm. I, said, I know that you know. But the rest of you, and you especially. You guys uh, might sometimes forget that, but you know, when when Episode Four opens up, that's already towards the the latter days of the Empire, like the first Star Wars movie. They already have a lot of the technology that they've developed over the course of their time. Like, what is Luke eighteen, nineteen? Empire's already been around for nineteen years. What about before that? Right. So there's a lot of that early Empire uh, Clone Wars era technology that I think can uh, can certainly work dual faction. I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff like that, and it might not just be X Wing. The Armada player in me also hopes that they show us Victory Class Star Destroyers and, and a lot of that sort of stuff. We get to see a lot of really groovy uh, dual faction potential on screen. And so so I think that that's exciting. Now, I know that um, there's not a whole lot right now that's currently announced for... Um, you know, for X-Wing outside of the Trident. You know, we knew we knew we were getting some stuff from the Mandalorian coming up. I don't really see stuff from the Mandalorian becoming heavily dual faction, but there is the possibility, like with cards like, you know, maybe Cara Dune or uh or or some of the pilots, you know, uh, I mean Dave Filoni himself, what Trapper Wolf and and you know and like and some some of those type of characters uh, potentially, but I think that's stuff I think a lot of that dual faction type stuff may come with Rangers of the New Republic and however that all works out. So um there is some potential there. But uh you know I think they've also set the precedent with previous releases. If we go back to the last wave, we had a lot of stuff that was available for use, like upgrade cards that were available for use dual faction and kind of paved the way. Uh, you know, Django Fett's Slave 1 comes to mind. You had all these scum and villainy car usable cards that came in the Slave 1, and that it was almost felt like a dual faction pack, although it wasn't. And so... You know, I, th I feel like they've been kind of getting closer and closer to that way, and now being with Atomic Mass Games and uh, having Luke Eddy at the helm, I think it's time to get that. Another potential dual faction ship I really want to see is a Rebel and Scum and Villainy Cloud Car. And maybe I'm crazy. I want you guys to let me know down in the comments section. What do you think of having a Cloud Car show up? <clears throat> I think it'd be super cool, but... I always kind of take the stab at the cloud car because it's high cannon, man. It was in the original trilogy and we still don't have it. We can do atmospheric combat in X-Wing. Come on, guys. Am I crazy? Let me know. Um, all right, guys. I want to thank you all so much uh, for watching. Make sure you guys join the Discord. We've got a great Discord. There's links down in the description below. Links for merch also. Links for luxury playstyle. style. If you're interested in supporting the channel via Patreon, there's all kinds of links. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are amazing. May the 4th be with you. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.